Um, so this is Dylan's room. It has always been Dylan's room. Sort of messy because we left it sort of the way he had it. <laughs> Which was messy, disorganized. Um, when he started to understand that I was losing friends to yeah. cancer and his grandparents battled cancer, he had said to me from probably eight years old and on, I, I don't want to die of cancer. Him going into the tech side was definitely not a surprise. My dad's very into building computers and it was something that he did from our childhood. I would have Dylan literally on my lap while I was doing Viroscan, so he was exposed to it right from the get-go. Dylan was the type of student who needed that extra sort of project to really shine. And Dylan approached me and he said, Mr. Esposito, remember that small project we did in grade nine, hooked up our computers, and were able to bring in scientific data from around the world. And then our computers went through that data and then sent them back the final product. And I said, yeah. He's like, well, what are the servers doing in the back of the classroom? World Community Grid can be thought of as a large computing platform dedicated to supporting scientific research that benefit humanity, which communicates with uh, millions of devices around the globe. And the complex scientific tasks are reduced to smaller pieces that are sent to these volunteer machines or devices. And after computation is finished, the devices send it back to the servers that combine the information and send it to the collaborating research groups. The more processing power that you can produce the more cancer data that you can go through. He was actually able to contribute tens of years of advanced data the scientific community was looking for. We were doing a lot of remote learning, lots of time on the computer, and he was having some issues with his arm, so we had gone to the doctor. They had looked at it and they were like, okay, here, take some you know, anti-inflammatories. If the swelling doesn't go down, then we'll revisit it. It did not go down, it continued to get worse. Um, the doctor was like, it's, it's cancer. Unfortunately, Ewing's hides. It can be hiding in your body for quite some time before you actually know it's there. And unless you end up with a pronounced like tumor, you wouldn't know that you had it. So and until he had his pronounced tumor, we would have never known. Unfortunately, with Ewing's sarcoma, uh, like once you get past age two, the survivability rates Very dramatically well. drop. So, That's you know, an extra five months beyond the expected time frame, we were blessed. It never stopped him from doing what he loved. He pushed through everything, all the pain, all the suffering. He was always playing games. He was always active in his communities and he continued to keep tabs on how the research was doing, seeing if there was something he could do remotely to fix it. He never lost the passion for his projects despite being like terminally ill. He was always involved. And when Dylan passed away, it was a very quiet time. Mr. Esposito had a plaque made with Dylan's picture, and it hangs in the room. That means a lot to us because I know that that was a huge thing for him, that he liked to work that project. The fact that, you know, that people can see that that's what he did and that they remember that he was working on that is amazing. Dylan Bucci's involvement really sparked interest beyond the borders. So the legacy of Dylan is really living in all of the current and future students. Yeah, if he was still around, um, I think he definitely would have kept pushing towards doing stuff for cancer research. I definitely think he would have probably finished every single computer course that Sisler offered and probably kept going as far as he could. He loved computers and he wanted nothing more but to work with them for the rest of his life. <laughs>